What's up guys, sorry I've been MIA on YouTube over the past year. I haven't had really time to make any videos. Uh, I've been trying to finish my engineering degree up at school, so, um, but that's that's over now, so I'm um, getting back to work on the Jeep. It's been running great. Uh, as you guys know, this is my 05 um, Jeep Wrangler SE with the 2.4 liter that I did a full turbo build on. Uh, the thing's been running great, I can't complain. And I'll do a series of videos updating on all the stuff that's going on. Um, but yeah, I can't complain. I'm very happy with it. But I kind of want to share something I've been working on. Um, you guys at the 2.4 liter may have run into this issue uh, with this stock exhaust manifold. So this is what the stock exhaust manifold looks like with the naturally aspirated setup. So what comes on the Jeep stop, stock? Um, but I don't know. I just had a few guys asking me um, on the forum, stuff like that about making an aftermarket exhaust manifold uh, for the naturally aspirated guys because these things have a horrible history of cracking. Um, on my Jeep alone, I've went probably through three of them and I, over the you know the, the three years I had it stock. So what happens is they, I guess from the, the heat and cooling, they end up cracking. This is the last manifold that I dug out of the junk pile that I had on my Jeep when it was stock. Um, this was only on there for probably two months and you could see there's some pretty decent cracking. I don't know if you can see the crack in there. And these cracks end up giving you a nasty exhaust like there's a better shot of it. And it happens between each one of the runners. And um, so the first thing I did when this happened the first time is go out and look for an aftermarket option to replace it so I wouldn't have to end up buying these manifolds. I think they're over a hundred bucks each. And it adds up quick, so I ended up not finding anything aftermarket, so having to go with the stock replacement at AutoZone or wherever I got it from. Um, and it just keep, kept happening. So that was another reason for doing the turbo setup, just to get that issue resolved. Um, so what I've been working on is I got a few requests on the forum to actually make a few of these uh, naturally aspirated manifolds to resolve that issue and give an aftermarket option. So this was my spin on, I've, as you guys know, I've been building turbo kits uh, like crazy because um, a lot of you guys out there are doing the same thing as me. So I've been shipping those out. Um, I'm doing an updated um, design, which I'll get into in the next video. Uh, it's pretty awesome with a brand new turbo, uh, bigger turbo, stuff like that, better flowing manifold. So, uh, But this video will be focused on what I'm doing here. So for the guys that don't want to go for the full turbo setup, uh, I designed a system that works way better than the, the old system, and I'll show you a few of the flaws that I don't like about the stock setup uh, that I changed for this system just to give it a much better design, a much better characteristic, and uh, a much tougher design. Um, because if anything, this is just a more rugged design than the other one. Um, it will flow more, and I'll, I'll get into that a little more, um, but it'll definitely be more rugged. Um, the tubing itself in the manifold is all Schedule 10 stainless steel, so you're not going to have to worry about corrosion issues. Um, you're going to have, I'll show you what Schedule 10 stainless steel looks like. Um, this is the thickness of the manifold. So that's beveled, but it gives you a good idea. Um, so that makes up the basic structure of the manifold. Uh, the flanges themselves are actually a custom built uh, CNC half inch flange that goes from the oval port on the head. Uh, to the Schedule 10 stainless uh, round. So they're, they're uh, CNC ported, again, to, to maximize the flow. Uh, and they also have some cutouts in the back to reduce the um, the possibility of warping of the manifold if you do get it really, really hot. Um, so I took that and went to a two and a half inch uh, V-band. So V-bands are ended up being my favorite type of flange uh, because they're so versatile. Um, they're also, there's no gaskets involved, so you just have the clamp itself um, that clamps both pipes together. Uh, I'll show you what a V-band looks like for the guys that don't know. Uh, basically, you get two halves that have a little V-shape to them, so that when you tighten the clamp down, it actually pulls them together uh, and makes a perfect seal. So that's what the V-band looks like. Uh, so that's two of V-bands. Uh, that goes to two and a half inch um, stainless steel. Uh, downpipe, so that goes from the manifold down under the Jeep. So this makes a 45 degree turn down, uh, fits really nicely between everything. I tried to keep it as far away from the firewall as possible um, because we know how hot it gets inside of there, uh, just on both sides of the, the firewall. Um, but 
that goes to a flex joint at the bottom there. There's no flex joint in the stock system, which um, can end up in cracking the exhaust that I've seen. Uh, it also just gives you more versatility when you're installing it. Uh, same thing with the V-bands, you can swivel them in different directions, but um, if you get everything together, it'll fit perfectly because I've test fit each one that I build um, and also have jig for each one. So what I did actually is, because I've, I build those turbo setups, like I said, with the turbo manifold, um, the downpipe that comes off of the turbo that uh, is actually this downpipe here. Um, I took the uh, turbo kit, put it on, and actually uh, ran it under the Jeep uh, to where it stops. And then left a, made kind of a jig off the frame. If you can see there, um, this is just a, a big C clamp that's clamped to a piece of steel that I welded, uh, like a dummy piece right here with a V-band on it. So that both the naturally aspirated and the uh, turbo downpipes meet up to the same spot. Uh, so that when, um, I also have mid pipes that I sell as well that go back and then dump before the rear axle, that they'll fit, those mid pipes will fit uh, both systems. Um, as you can see the downpipe right now is just tacked up. It's not finished welded. Uh, that's because uh, my, the turbo system's going right back in here. Um, this is kind of a last minute thing that I wanted to do just to give an option for the guys, because I know it was a pain in the ass for me, so um, that'll be fully finished well that I'll do a jig for it and everything, so it'll all be the same, uh, and I can send those guys out to you. So also another thing that restricts power, obviously, is the cat. Uh, it basically acts like a giant filter in your exhaust, um, which doesn't help our underpowered 2.4 liter, but um, my downpipes won't have a cat in it. However, if you want one, I can actually put one in the midpipe. Uh, which will be again connected to the downpipe in the middle of the Jeep. Uh, I can put one in there for you if you want to do it for inspection purposes or you just want to have a cat. Uh, they're kind of expensive, so it, it's going to be a little more. Um, but what's nice about our secondary O2 sensor um, is that the, the wire actually extends far enough that you can you can have a cat all the way back here and still put the O2 sensor behind it. Um, like with my turbo setup, these Jeeps can actually be tricked uh, without a cat and not throw a code stock. Uh, and that's thanks to these handy uh, restrictor elbows. Um, so I have over 10,000 miles uh, on my turbo setup. Uh, and I've never thrown a light for a secondary O2 sensor. And it's thanks to this guy with the restrictor. Um, in there, this threads into like your O2 bung that would go in for your secondary O2 sensor. And your O2 sensor threads into here. And this basically takes the sensor out of the exhaust stream and tricks it into thinking the cat's still there. Uh, so these things actually work on our Jeep. Some some vehicles, they don't. Um, ours are simple enough that it works fine. So again, if you want a cat, um, we can make that happen for sure. Um, but also, not in this downpipe right now are the O2 bungs um, for the primary and secondary O2 sensor. Um, those will be, be in there also. Again, this is just a quick thing that I wanted to do uh, to get a jig off of um, in case you guys want this. Um, so go, going back to the factory downpipe, um, so obviously the tubing that I'll be using is a little bit bigger. This is like two and a quarter inch uh, tubing. Uh, and then it also necks down here when it goes to the factory, I guess, mid pipe, whatever you want to call it. Um, this necks down to something really tiny. I think it's a two inch or even less than a two inch. Um, so you have basically a large, larger diameter all the way down until you get to the, the necked part there, which obviously will give you some restriction. Um, any, any increase in flow is going to help our our little uh, 2.4 liter get a little more power. So this setup should help. Um, I actually wanna hopefully give it one of you guys and have you guys dyno it and see if it makes a difference. Uh, it should based on what we're looking at, but uh, I guess we'll see in the future. But uh, again, it's gonna be more of a rug rugged thing uh, to make sure you don't have any problems cracking, stuff like that. Um, what else do I wanna say? Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, also the location of the mid pipe here, um, in the factory setup ends up right in the middle of the skid plate. Uh, so if you ever do have to service your exhaust, it's a pain to get off to get in the middle there, especially if the bolts are rusty, uh, like most of the time they are. Um, so you end up having to pull, I at least I did I had to pull the skid plate down and actually cut the bolts off and get the exhaust out. Uh, that's why I made the my downpipes fit up um, and actually terminate before the skid plate. Um, so you can actually get in there and take this off and take each part off without having to get into the skid plate and um, not having access to it. So everything's extremely serviceable. So yeah, if you guys are interested in uh, in picking up a system, um, just 
shoot me an email, uh, zachfab171 at gmail.com, uh, Z-A-C-K-F-A-B-171 at gmail.com. Um, and tell me what you want, uh, whether it's a turbo kit or the naturally aspirated uh, system. I'm hopefully going to have a website up soon or a place you can actually see um, each part individually and they'll be priced out and all that stuff. Um, and then, yeah, just shoot me an email. Again, if you want a cat or uh, I may actually put another O2 bung in there for a wide band. If you guys want to do any NA tuning, stuff like that, um, I could just put a plug in it. And uh, if you don't use it, it'll, it'll be there if you ever need it. Um, yeah, so uh, also it'll, all the info will be in, uh, in the description below. So if you guys want to contact me, you can even leave a comment on uh, down below. And I'm usually pretty good at responding to that type of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'll be making a few more videos and then uh, showing you a few more things. So, all right, I'll see you guys later.